So as we mentioned, one example of a price floor is going to be minimum wage. Uh, let's just say minimum wage. So it's an example of a price floor because it's the minimum that you can um, that can be charged for an hour of labor. So this is a price floor. It's a legal minimum price for one hour of labor. Hopefully that all showed up on the screen. All right, so let's think about graphically representing this labor market where we have a uh, minimum wage. So we'll draw our axes here. Now, instead of thinking about putting price and quantity, let's use this scenario. And the price of labor is gonna be wage, right? So W for wage, or I'll just write wage in here. And we have, instead of quantity, we have the amount of labor on our x-axis. So just labeling the axes just a little bit differently. And now remember that the demand for labor is going to be the firms that are trying to pay for, for labor, trying to get people to work for them. And probably the higher the wage, the less labor they're going to be demanding, right? The less the quantity demanded of labor is. So we have this downward sloping demand curve for labor. Now let's think about the suppliers of labor. Well, that's, you know, workers. So you're a supplier of labor if you're going to work. So if we put ourselves in worker shoes, then you know, the higher the wage, the more labor that we're willing to supply, the more people that are willing to work for that wage, or the more that we're willing to work. So we have this upward sloping supply curve for labor. So let's say without government involvement, we'd get some a wage of let's say nine dollars an hour and we have however many workers working now we got to think to ourselves is this a great representation of the labor market or the low wage uh, labor market anyway you know we're making these big assumptions about the number of buyers the number of sellers um, and that all the goods are the same right we have homogeneous goods so we gotta think about whether this is actually a good representation of the market in general, because maybe there's not many uh, buyers of labor. Maybe there's some kind of market power and ability to set prices. But anyway, so let's imagine that these competitive market assumptions hold here. And then the government comes along and says, well, I'm gonna have a minimum wage of $12 an hour. I think it's 14 or something like that in Ontario right now. So maybe we should just change that to 14. So at this price floor, this is how many, this is the quantity demanded of labor. So this is how much firms want to hire. Well, this is the quantity supplied of labor. And so we think of this excess supply, just like normal, we have this excess supply. which we're gonna think of as, this is what unemployment is. Right, so excess supply in the labor market is gonna be unemployment. So we're gonna have Q go down, just like a normal binding price floor. And so this is just an example of a, you know, of a price floor. Again, I just want to underline that this might not be the best representation of the labor market in general. We're making huge assumptions, right? We're making these competitive market assumptions about the labor market. And so in the slides for, for this module, you'll see kind of a discussion about um, 
a discussion about um, you know what actual studies have found that look at the impact of minimum wage, and so you know some people are going to argue that you know increasing the minimum wage is going to cause unemployment to rise because firms are going to demand less labor, and so quantity in terms of labor, so labor is going to go down. Uh, so the number of people working is going to go down, and that's going to cause unemployment. But that's assuming that this is what the market for labor looks like. And as I've been saying, it's not clear that these assumptions, these huge assumptions we're making are going to hold in this labor market. So I'd be very careful about using this kind of graphical representation of the labor market to, um, to argue that unemployment is going to be created from increasing minimum wage. Turns out it's actually a really hard question to answer. How does minimum wage affect um, unemployment? Lots of economists have started to study this, and in general, we, you know, we have, you know, many studies kind of find no effect or a positive effect on minimum wage on um, employment and things like that. So be careful not to take too much away from this and kind of conclude that minimum wages are job killers. It's not necessarily what actually holds in um, in the real world.